All right, so getting ready here for the very first live episode of the Phys Ed Show. Uh, just going to give it a second, see if anybody tunes in. And then from there, uh, we'll get started. So this is also going to be broadcasted again. It's going to be saved on YouTube. So I'll be embedding the video into the show notes blog post. And then we'll see uh, if I'll, in that blog post, I'll be sharing all the links and everything. I already got it all together for you. Uh, pretty much everything I talk about here, I'll make sure that I have it in that uh, show notes uh, post. And if every, I do talk about something that you might not uh, that you might not see available in the show notes, just let me know and I'll be happy, happy, happy to add it in. Uh, so we got, we got a couple of viewers coming in. So uh, I'm just going to introduce myself real quick. So my name is Joey Fight. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, if you don't know who I am, I'm the founder of thephysicaleducator.com and I'm a phys ed teacher here in Montreal, Canada. And what you're watching right now is the phys ed show. So the phys ed show is a medium through which I share ideas from my teaching, interviews with amazing um, guests, uh, and pretty much all kinds of resources, anything I feel that I that could really help you get fired up in your teaching and just, uh, you know, just teach with a lot of inspiration and a lot of passion uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. So today is the first ever live episode of the show. So the show exists in podcast form, it exists as a vlog, and as these live episodes. And I'm going to be flat out honest with you, this is my first time ever going live on Facebook, so I'm, ex I'm expecting it to be a little bit awkward at first, um, and I'm expecting things to go wrong. So just bear with me as, as we go through here, uh, because there might be a couple of mistakes. Um, but that said, tonight's topic is a, a topic that's really challenging for me to talk about um, just because it's something that I struggle with. And the reason I want to do this topic live is because of that very fact. It's the fact that I'm not really good at this, that I want to do live because there's no way for me to embellish it or, you know, like kind of scratch out any of the, uh, the iffy parts or anything like that. Uh, what you see is what you get here. So I'm hoping that we can make this special. Uh, the topic for tonight is about finding balance in your life, or more importantly, how to stay balanced and how to create that balance in your life. Um, the way the topic is gonna, the way the presentation is gonna be put together here, so if I just show you uh, my screen real quick, I'm just gonna jump over, here we go. All right, so just like with all my topics, I break it down into four parts. So we're gonna start the show off by just exploring the why behind what is important about leading a balanced life. And from there, uh, we're going to discover, so I'm going to share some tips, tools, and tactics with you that can help you create balance in your life and in your work. Um, we're going to observe, so I'm going to, I'm going to actually talk about my own experience with this topic, so uh, my own struggles, my own shortcomings, and my own successes in terms of finding balance and creating balance in my life. And finally, uh, the last part is act. So I'm going to give you some strategies that you can use to start implementing some of these habits, these tools, these tactics that I'll be talking about so that you can start creating a, a better sense of balance in your life. Now, the thing is with uh, this live format is you can send in comments, you can send in questions. Uh, I will try to respond to them in, in, as I can, but I will mostly be focusing on them at the end of the show so that I can kind of stay focused here and not just constantly be like, uh, and reading what's going on as I'm trying to present. So let's get right into it. Let's talk about that big idea that why uh, behind everything that has to do with finding and creating balance in your life. So first of all, let's talk about what it means to live a balanced lifestyle. So I, I put a lot of thought into it when I was trying to think, okay, like how am I going to approach this topic of balance? And really to me, leading a, a balanced life means being in a state of well-being in which you're uh, acting with intention and purpose and in which you're able to act freely without any uh, external pressures really pushing down on you. So being able to act in ways and make decisions that are aligned with your goals and your values. For me, that's what balance means. It, it means being able to live a life where I feel good about where I'm at in my life, where I feel good about who I am, I feel good about the decisions I'm making. Um, and because I'm in that state of mind, I'm therefore able to make the best decisions possible and take the best actions possible and what I mean by that is really, again, getting back to this point of making and taking decisions that are aligned with my values and my goals. Now, why is that important? Why is it important that we get there? Well, the thing is, is that as teachers, you probably know, uh, we tend to be very selfless people. 
um, we're the kind of people that always want to say yes to everybody else because the fact that we work with young people because the fact that you know we work with people uh, uh, kids who might be coming from rough backgrounds or kids who are looking up to us as models we always want to give and give and give and give because we want to be able to provide them with the best experience as possible but the thing is, is that as we give and give and give to students we wind up depleting ourselves and if ever you have a chance to meet this uh, big old man from North Carolina called um, Larry McDonald, uh, you know, Mac taught me about the fact that uh, as a giver, you need to have some place where you can get. As a filler, you need to have somewhere where you can get filled. And, you know, as much as we can go to specific places, we can go for specific resources, a lot of that comes from ourselves. And really the big idea here is that you can't pour from an empty cup. What can you do on your day-to-day -day basis to ensure that you're constantly filling up your own cup so that you can continue to serve others? So that's gonna be a bit of the central idea here that we're gonna be focusing on. Now the thing is, is that when it comes to balance, when it comes to getting to a place where you're able to be in that position where you can continue to give without depleting yourself, you know, a lot of people think that you have to go out and you have to find that balance. But the reality is that balance isn't something that you find balance is something that you create and by creating that balance by by coming up with habits and tools and tactics that you can use to allow yourself to create that sense of balance in your life then you can be in a position where you can continue to serve the people that you wish to serve on an ongoing basis while still leading the best life possible so that's our big why here the why it's so important to live a balanced lifestyle is that we want to be able to continue to serve, we want to be able to continue to do good for others, but we need to be able to make sure that we're taking care of ourselves first so that we can continue to act in ways, again, that are aligned with our, our values and our goals. So the second part, we're gonna move right into the second part of this presentation. And the second part of the presentation in, is in which I'm gonna share with you all the different um, habits that I've tried to form over the years. And I don't by any means want you to think that I'm perfect at all these, or that I do them every day, okay? And I'll talk about that in part three. Um, but I want to share with you some habits that have had a big impact on my life and that have helped me create a better sense of balance in my day to day. So I'm just gonna jump over to my presentation here. Um, so here we go. All right. And then I'll jump, I'll have you come on over too. All right. So we've talked about the Explorer. We focused on that bigger sense of why, okay? And we understand what we're, we're trying to achieve here. Now it's time to discover. And what I wanna share with you really today is I wanna share with you eight different habits that have had a meaningful impact on my life. Those eight habits are getting organized, journaling, exercising, go figure, sleeping, meditating, reading, getting outdoors, and saying no, which I tried to save the best for last year. So let's just talk quickly about that first habit, which is getting organized. Um, so the best way for me to, under, to explain kind of the importance of getting organized is to really think about that feeling of when you don't have any balance in your life. When you feel like you're getting overwhelmed, when you're spread too thin, um, you feel like you're just constantly reacting to new things that are happening in your life and you're not in any kind of state where you're able to make the optimal decisions or take the optimal actions in your life. Getting organized for me is like that first step in making sure that I'm able to um, understand exactly what I have on my plate and then take actions that are gonna get me to a place where I can get regain that balance and make sure that I'm clearing things off my plate so I can have a clear mind and a good amount of focus. Now, how do I get organized? Um, well, one of the big ideas here is that if ever you have a chance to read a book, I'm actually going to talk to you a little bit about later on, but this book right here, Getting Things Done by David Allen. So Getting Things Done is a GTD, is a, is a productivity methodology that a lot of people are really in love with. And you know, there's some people out there that are super hardcore about it. I'm not super hardcore about it, but I do try and follow the methodology a bit because in my experience it has really helped me um, get organized in my life and make sure that I'm able to fully understand what's going on so that I can continue to uh, make decisions that are getting me closer to my own goals. So how do I get organized? 
Well, the first thing you got to know is that your brain is really bad at juggling a lot of things at once. Uh, we like to think that we're able to remember everything. We like to think that we'll never forget anything. But the reality is, is that we do forget things and we, we, we always uh, tend to um, forget about like the, those important things that we say, oh yeah, I'll do that or yeah, I'll attend that or whatever it may be. And we forget all that. And then what happens is that when we mess up and let's say we don't follow through on something or we forget to do something, we wind up feeling really poorly about ourselves and we wind up getting down on ourselves, getting engaged in negative self-talk and then just feeling really overwhelmed and, and anxious and stressed out and just really not balanced. So how do I get organized? The big thing here that I do is that I've created like a second brain for myself, all right? And what I mean by that is, it's something that I learned in this book, is that I've created a system that I trust, that I use on a daily basis, that allows me to keep track of all the inputs in my life so that I don't have to worry about, oh, what is that I was trying to remember before? What do I have coming up? I have this system that allows me to constantly keep track of that. Now that system's made up of three main apps. I'm just gonna show them to you here. Um, one app is a task manager, one app is a cloud-based note-taking app, and one app is a calendar app. So those apps are Things3, Evernote, and Fantastica. So the reason I use those, those apps, well, let me talk to you a little bit about Things first. Now, first of all, Things3 is a wonderful app. It's a beautiful app. I've been a Things user. It was the first like expensive app that I ever bought on my iPhone. Um, but speaking of expensive, Things is really expensive, all right? I think it's like $50 for the Mac desktop. I think it's $10 or $11 for the iPhone version. I think it's $30 for the uh, iPad version. Um, it's expensive. You don't need to be using things, but I do recommend that you do find some kind of system that allows you to keep track of your tasks. So the way that I use things is that whenever a task comes into mind, so for example, let's say um, today, okay? I, had, I was teaching uh, grade two. I have a student there uh, who has special needs, and I was like, all right, I need to make sure that I'm create that I that I'm creating his puzzle. I make these puzzles for him that have like the tasks that we're working on in class, and then he unlocks puzzle pieces by um, completing the tasks. Uh, but I almost forgot to do that, and had I forgotten to do that, I would have gone into the lesson unprepared for him, and I wouldn't have had anything set up, and you know I would have been setting him up for failure. So as soon as that pops into my mind, I put it into Things Three right away. Um, I do that on my Mac. I have a, a hotkey that I just press quickly. It brings up this little pop-up window and then I can just type it in and it saves it to the inbox. On my phone, I can just talk into my phone or on my Apple Watch, I can talk into my Apple Watch and quickly add things into my things uh, inbox. Now, a lot of things get added and what's really important is that it's great that you're collecting all these inputs, but you need to set aside time where you can actually go through them and review them and decide what the next action is, which is another big main concept of the getting things done methodology. So I use my Sundays for my maintenance day, which is where I'll go through uh, my things, I'll go through my email inbox, I'll go through my calendar and just kind of keep track of all the things that I've said yes to or that I've allowed into my life so that I'm able to organize myself moving forward. Every morning, I can show you things uh, here. Every morning when I get up on my watch, on my phone, um, things shows me the tasks that I have for that day. So if I just show you my things for today. So uh, what's great here is that you'll see like it has, um, I can't really zoom in here, but it has my calendar integrated into it, so it shows me my calendar, and then it has any tasks that I have for that day. Okay, so I can create projects in which I go, I create all these different uh, to-dos that I have to do there, and then by scheduling them in my today or having them in my inbox and uh, scheduling it into my week, this allows me to stay on top of all the tasks that I have to do. Okay, now the power in that is that by, again, that's my second brain. I have all those things in my system that I trust that's based in the cloud. I'm not going to lose it in any way. And that way there, I'm not constantly juggling those things in my mind. I'm not lying in bed at wake at night uh, trying to remember all the things I have to do. I'm not freaking out about, okay, how am I going to get this done? I know how to get things done. I've already planned for it and I've captured it into a system I trust. So that's things. The second part of this app is, or the system is Evernote. So if you've never used Evernote before, Evernote has been around for a long time. It's available pretty much on any platform you can imagine, but it's a cloud-based note-taking app. And what that means is that you take notes in Evernote, you can, take, you can type out text notes, uh, you can take pictures of stuff, you can uh, record audio recordings, and everything gets saved into Evernote. And the power of it is the fact that, first of all, it's cloud-based. So if I save something on my iPhone and then later on go on my Mac, and I was like, oh, what was that, that note that I wrote down? I can quickly find it. 
Um, and also Evernote has a really, really strong search engine built into it. So meaning that, you know, if I typed in something a few months ago, let's say uh, I typed up um, notes from a meeting a few months ago about how we're gonna work on, um, on create, making our school a, a health promoting school, I can just type in a keyword like health or promoting or whatever it may be, and it'll pull up all the notes that, uh, that has that. Uh, Francis, I see you're seeing, uh, saying OmniFocus. Uh, I've never used OmniFocus. My brother swears by it. I like things a little bit simpler, but OmniFocus I know is super powerful. Anyways, now what's great with Evernote too is that because of the fact that I can just quickly snap a picture, whenever any kind of important document comes into my life, I just scan it and save into Evernote right away. I don't even have to tag it. I don't have to do anything because if there's text on it, I can just search it. This makes me feel way better because I am terrible at organizing papers. All right, I lose papers all the time. And because of that, I get really upset at myself when I'm like, when I'm losing my mind trying to find a paper and I can't find it. Um, so saving everything in Evernote lets me know that everything's safe there, that I don't have to worry about it, and that I can access it at any time. And the last part of the system is uh, Fantastical. Now Fantastical is a, a calendar app. So I'm just gonna show you here, it lives in my menu bar. So this is Fantastical. And what's great with Fantastical is that it has amazing, amazing, amazing natural language input. So if I say lunch tomorrow at two and just type that in, it knows how to save that into my calendar right away. And I'm able to do that super, super quickly. I use it on my phone as well where I'll just talk into it. Um, and it, okay, so I'll add Nathan on in a second. Um, so I talk into my phone, so everything gets saved in there. And what, what I really like about that is the fact that, you know, um, if I say yes to a meeting, if I have a morning practice, if I told a student that I would meet with them at, at a specific time, I, I really, uh, I, I try to schedule everything into Fantastical so that I never forget all the commitments I've made. That way there, I'm never about to like go grab lunch and see the student show up and be like, oh shoot, I said I was going to talk to them at this time. I know it's coming up, so I'm able to plan around it. So just quickly, um, how do these systems integrate with Google? The three systems I'm talking about here, Nathan, like aren't great at integrating with Google. And obviously Google has a lot of equivalent um, systems. So uh, Google Keep is amazing. If you're, if you're a Google Apps uh, user, uh, Google Keep is incredible. It kind of serves the same purpose as Evernote where you can just save a ton of things right in there. Um, and Google Calendar has a lot of the natural text input that Fantastical has. I think the reason I use these apps is because it's out of habit. It's after years of using them and becoming comfortable with them and knowing like just the hotkeys and how to get things quickly and how to get things done. It all fit into it. And um, I've tried different apps. You know, when my school switched to uh, Google Apps for Education, I tried going full Google for a bit and I always wind up coming back to my uh, normal Mac apps. Um, but that said, like, there are a lot, like all the apps I talked here, except for Evernote, but even Evernote's premium, uh, that you can pay premium. Um, a lot of these apps uh, are expensive and there's a lot of free equivalents they can use. Jane, you're asking, how do you scan the docs? So within Evernote, um, if you open up the camera, it has a document scanner built into it. So if you just hold the camera over a text, it will recognize the, te the or, or the page and it'll automatically scan it, save it in really nice black and white which makes it really easy for you to uh, read it afterwards, but also for the search to be able to search it. And Evernote's even really good at recognizing handwriting too. So if you take handwritten notes and you wanna save them, you can save them and then search for anything you typed in and find it that way. So th that's my first habit is just trying to be as organized as possible. And really these apps, um, things, so having a task manager, having a note taking app, having a calendar that you're able to access anywhere, um, it really allows you to have that second brain uh, that system that you trust so that you're not constantly um, stressing out about it and not constantly waking up with your head, head popping off your pillow being like, oh shoot, I forgot to do this. It lets you stay on top of your game so you can get things done. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, so moving on uh, to our second, our second uh, habit is journaling and the power of journaling. So the reason I like to journal, um, and I try to journal every morning, and journaling is probably the one, one of the, the, aside from getting organized and saying no, it's probably the habit I'm most consistent with. Um, and the reason is that I found journaling to be a really strong uh, or really powerful habit that has had a huge impact on me because of the fact that when you start your day off sitting down and writing into your journal, you taking that time at your start of your day 
to decide, okay, this is me time and I'm investing in myself. That is a very empowering feeling. Knowing that you're taking a break from all the busyness and craziness for your life to sit down and reflect and think about your goals and think about your values and think about the things you're grateful for. That is you saying, okay, I am in charge of this life and I'm going to make things happen. So I want to share just quickly how I journal. And again, um, anything I'm talking about, I created a show notes blog post that has everything in a lot of detail. But the app that I use for journaling is an app called Day One. It's an app I've been using for a long time and I just want to show you a little bit how I have it set up. So without showing you my entire journal here, I'm just going to go over to day one. Um, so this here's a blank entry. Now, what I do with day one is that I have um, a template that I use. And the way I use that template is I use an app called Paste, which is a life-saving um, uh, clipboard manager. So I'll just pull up Paste here. And here I have my, my, uh, my journal template. So I'll just double tap. And here's what I journal every day. So every morning, I'll type in three things I'm grateful for. Developing that attitude of gratitude is a great way to put a positive spin on your morning and to remember all of the, or be reminded of all the blessings that you have in your life. Then I'll type in my big goal. So what is it that I'm working towards? Okay, what is it, my, my mission that I'm working towards, something that I'm trying to achieve currently in my life? Writing that down every morning reinforces it and keeps that goal very tangible and very real for me. I'll write down my three values. Now the reason I write down my values is, is for a very specific reason. As I mentioned at the beginning, balance is being, uh, being in the state of mind where you're able to act with purpose and intention in ways that are aligned with your goals and your values. All right, By writing down my values every morning, even though it might seem silly because we know what our values are and, and we use them all the time, but by really writing them down, it helps me make decisions throughout the day that are aligned with those values. And taking the time to reflect on them and putting them front and center has had a huge impact on the way that I make decisions now that I'm like, I'm going to have to say no to this because of the fact that I'm saying yes to something that's more aligned to my values and just makes that whole process a lot easier for me, which I'll talk a little bit about more later on when we get to uh, saying no. Um, once I've written down my three values, I'll write down uh, a way that I can help somebody that day. Um, this here is some, again, is just a mindset that I'm trying to shift or that I'm trying to create in terms of like every day I want to go out and I want to try and help people. Um, because uh, that's the kind of person I want to be. <laughs> and then I'll do something called morning pages. I'm going to be honest, everything in the evening reflection, this year's supposed to be the evening reflection, I often, I do this maybe once a month. <laughs> I always forget to do the evening part. Uh, even though you can set reminders, usually I'm tired by the end of the night. Uh, but the morning part I do very often. Uh, now morning pages, if you're unfamiliar with morning pages, uh, it's a creative process that a lot of writers use and basically what it is you just sit down and you just write You don't write with any judgment. You just start writing. You don't have to have a topic. You don't have to have anything It's really anything that's in your mind. You just start spilling out and putting onto paper or <laughs> into your app uh, Now the reason I do morning pages is for two reasons first of all morning pages really help me Try and figure out all the underlying thoughts and feelings that are going on in my in my uh, in my mind all right, we're not always aware of the things that are nagging at the back of our mind that might be affecting our mood. By doing morning pages and allowing myself to spill these things out, it really helps me understand, okay, this is what's going on. These are the feelings I'm having. And by naming those feelings and naming those thoughts, um, it allows me then to try and shift my mindset around them. And that brings me to part two of these morning pages. Larry McDonald, again, who I mention on a regular basis because he has, a, has had a huge impact on my life. Um, he taught me about the power of words and choosing words that um, are positive. He always said, why would you ever choose to be negative? Why would you choose to be positive? So for example, if I'm writing in my morning pages and I say, I have to go to this meeting tonight, I'll flip that and I'll say, I get to go to this meeting tonight. Um, or if uh, I feel like, uh, like I'm feeling really upset about, I don't know, like I'm feeling really upset about the fact that I'm so behind on my projects. I'll flip that and be like, at least now I know what I need to be doing so that I can get closer to completing these projects. Now, the reason I do that as I write, so I go back and edit my own writing. The reason I, the reason I do that is because it allows me to change my mindset. Oftentimes we, we engage in this negative self-talk that we don't even, we're not even fully aware that we're doing and has a really bad impact on our mindset 
And that then goes out and affects the whole rest of our day, the way that we make our decisions, the, the, the actions we take, the way we interact with others. By taking time to edit yourself like that, you wind up doing it on uh, throughout your day. So as I go to talk to somebody, if I'm going to find myself complaining or venting about something, you know, I might take a step back and just think about, okay, what's a positive way I can say this? Or what's a, how can I choose to be positive in this situation? And a lot of that starts with those morning pages that I work with in my journal. So it's a really, it's a really powerful practice. Um, and like I said, the journaling is, is something that I, I really love. If you're not somebody who likes an app, then just get yourself a, a, a pen and paper journal. Or if you want to follow something that has a template, I really recommend the five minute journal. I've also used the self journal in the past, which is a little bit more focused on productivity, but the five minute journal is a really great journal for just remembering what you're grateful for, remembering what your goals are and, and being aware of how you're feeling inside and just being reflected in that way. So that was our second uh, habit. Uh, so we're going to keep moving down the chain here. And our, the third habit is one that really should be, uh, yeah, I'll share the journal template in the um, in the show notes. Okay, uh, I'll I'll add that after the show. Uh, so the third habit is an absolute no brainer uh, for us phys ed teachers, but the reality is it's something that a lot of us cut out of our schedule on a regular basis, and that's exercise. Um, too often, uh, I talk to teachers and we talk about like the, how we're active and everything, and what you hear is, "I'm too busy. I don't have time. I'm too busy." And what's crazy and by the way i'm totally guilty of this myself okay i haven't been to the gym in two weeks i'm very upset about myself about it um but what's crazy is that we know that when we do exercise uh we're our best selves we're able to think more clearly we're able to be more productive uh our mood is enhanced okay our, our confidence is boosted um there's so many benefits uh to being active on a regular basis that we're missing out on when we say Oh, I'm too busy. I'm too busy. You know, when I was in university, there was a professor there who passed away and they have a run for him every year, David uh, Montgomery. And I always remember the shirts at the run always said, find time to exercise. And I think it's really important that we make sure that we make exercise a priority in our lives, especially as physical education teachers. And yeah, I could say the whole, you know, we're role modeling for students. And I do think that's really important. That said, I, th I think that even more importantly is that we want to make sure we're being our best selves and living our best lives. So the, I think Nathan, you just kind of mentioned it. Um, I think that one of the key things to do is to pick times throughout the week that are good times for you to be getting active, schedule those into your calendar, and then under no circumstances, touch those scheduled moments. All right. Make sure that you're making that time to exercise. Other good ideas is to, one thing I like to do is I like to set prompts. So for example, um, you know, I'll have my, my gym bag with uh, any of like my shower gear or my workout gear, or anything like that, by the front door when I'm leaving on the days I'm gonna work out. I usually try and hit the gym at school on Tuesdays and Fridays. Um, so having that there means that I'm, as I'm walking, I'm like, okay, it's here, it's all ready, it's good to go, let's go. The more that you can remove those small obstacles that get into your way, uh, the more likely you're actually to follow through with your exercise uh, plan. The other thing I'm gonna say is, you know, especially if you live like in a place like Montreal, where like we just got snow uh, yesterday, um, the weather can really have an impact too. So a good idea there is to create an if this and then that plan. So when you're sitting down and you're planning out your exercising schedule and everything, uh, your workout schedule, create an if this and that plan, meaning that write down, okay, if this then happens, so for example, if it snows outside and I'm supposed to go running, then I'll make my way up to the treadmill uh, at school. Uh, or if I wind up having a, a meeting pop out of nowhere that I wasn't expecting and I'm not able to hit the gym, then I'll do 20 minutes of yoga at home. All right, so having that plan can help you keep those streaks going. And when you have that streak going, you it becomes meaningful to you and you want to keep it going, which is going to lead it to a place, uh, is going to help you make that time to go out and exercise and, and get all those benefits from exercising. Now, over the summer, I just want to talk about quickly two apps uh, that I really fell in love with, which are the two uh, free Nike apps on, on iOS, and I believe they're on Android, obviously, um, but Nike Plus Running Club and Nike Training Club, both are free, both are, are amazing, the quality is out of this world, um, but for me, I found that really motivating to have like that program that I got to follow, to have really exciting workouts, it was new workouts all the time, it was always fresh, it was always new, and to have that built-in social support, 
that isn't for everybody. Not everybody's into that. And there's a lot of alternative apps too. But for me, I thought that was really motivating. So I just want to put that out there. And if you're on Nike, feel free to add me too. I'd love to have some more friends on, on that, that platform. So that was our third habit, which is exercise. And we're ready to get into the next one, which is sleep. Um, so again, when we talk about the fact that, you know, oh, I don't have time or I'm too busy or I have uh, uh, too much on my plate. Uh, I've got to get this done. I've got to get this done. I'm rushed. I've got deadlines coming up. And we wind up cutting out in all the important areas, exercise being one, sleep being the other. Uh, we know that as human beings, we need sleep. We need that time to recharge. And a lot of, a lot of us are developing these really terrible habits when it comes around sleep. So either sleeping irregular hours, sleeping for too short, uh, spending a ton of time on screens before going to bed and just having our minds buzzing prior to sleeping, being disturbed throughout the night with notifications and things like that. So just a few things I want to say that have helped me get better sleep because this is a, it was an area in my life that I neglected for a long time and I didn't really realize the impact that it had on me until I started focusing more on it. And to be honest, I still neglect it. Uh, I've been really busy with the website these days and unfortunately I've been cutting out sleep and I know that I need to be better at it. Uh, but one thing, uh, some things that have worked well for me is, first of all, stick to a regular schedule. So if you get up, if you go to bed at a certain time, you get up at a certain time, try and stick to that schedule as much as possible. We know that our bodies work on cycles. We know that messing up with those cycles can keep, leave us completely groggy and feeling crazy and just not feeling our best. Um, so make sure that you're sticking to a schedule both on weekdays and on weekends if possible. Trust me, your body will really benefit from it. Ever since I started getting up early on the weekends, I've, I've been way more productive, I've been feeling better, um, and it's been a lot easier for me to maintain that schedule uh, throughout the week as well. Second of all, get away from screens before going to bed. Uh, but again, this is something I'm terrible with because I do a lot of work on a computer when I get home from work. Um, but the, fat, the earlier you can get away from a screen, think, okay, so there's nothing natural about the light that comes from our screens. I don't care if you use Flux, I don't care if you use um, Apple's, whatever they call it, the, how they change the, the blue colors coming out of the light, all right? There's nothing natural about this lighting. And because of that, even though we might not feel it, the back of our mind is freaking out, being like, why the heck is it so sunny outside right now? Um, and it just has, it's, it's buzzing, it's buzzing, especially if you're doing something that's mind numbing, like watching videos or watching TV or something like that. Then what happens is you, all of a sudden you go to bed and your brain's like, what's going on? Like the sun hasn't set, like I'm, I'm, I was seeing light two seconds ago. So try and shut those screens off as early as possible. Third, don't keep your phone in your room. Even if you think that putting on do not disturb is, isn't gonna bother you, get that phone out of your room, all right? I sleep horribly when my phone is in my room with me. Um, and ever since I started taking my phone out of my room, I've been sleeping much better because the thing is, is that I would oftentimes wake up in the night and just be a little groggy and just check my phone, see if, okay, what time is it? Oh, I got some notifications. Um, and then all of a sudden I've got all this light in my eyes and I've got a notification that's making my mind race. And all of a sudden I went from this place where I was sleeping to feeling wide awake and anxious, right? It's not worth it. Keep your phone outside your room. If you use your phone as your alarm clock or your bedside table or your, be your, 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 um, your bedside clock, okay? Just go on Amazon, buy a super cheap one, and keep that in your room. Keep your phone out of your room. And my last tip, and this works for me, it might not work for everyone, is read some fiction before going to bed. All right, I always think of like, when you're a little kid, your parents put you to bed, they read you a story, um, and it helps you sleep. You have amazing dreams, you have a great sleep, everything's great. Um, but if you are just gonna lie in bed and feel like you're wide awake, if you're gonna read something, read some fiction. Okay, if you start reading nonfiction, nonfiction is wonderful and I'll talk about that later on. But the thing is, nonfiction can get those gears going in your brain where you're thinking and then you're just like, oh, I could do that. And all of a sudden, you're wide awake with all these crazy ideas and this creativity is flowing as opposed to you winding down and getting ready to go to bed. Um, so if you're gonna read something, read some fiction. Uh, if you're looking for book titles to read, uh, anything from Neil Gaiman, I love Neil Gaiman, uh, but also, uh, if you've never read The Alchemist, I really recommend that, or The Little Prince. I think those two books are, are fiction books that every human being should read and read multiple times throughout their lives at different points of their life, but read some fiction. Whatever you do, just have a schedule, have a routine for your bedtime that allows you to go to bed comfortably and, and just get the best kind of sleep so that you wake up in the morning feeling 100% 
And by the way, a little last pro tip here about sleep, when you get up in the morning, chug some water. Oftentimes I wake up and I feel super groggy and I don't understand because like I went to bed like at the right time and I got up at the right time, feeling super groggy. That grogginess oftentimes is coming from dehydration. So just get up, make sure you're drinking water in the morning, okay? Your body loses a ton of water from breathing when you're sleeping. Get up, replenish that water, and you'll feel really good in, in no time. So that's our fourth habit with sleep. Number five is uh, meditation. So meditation has been gaining a ton of popularity in, um, in recent years. And it's kind of funny because it kind of used to be this thing that everybody assumed that monks or hippies did. And all of a sudden it's becoming really mainstream. And you're seeing all these CEOs and business people meditating and talking about all the benefits of it. Now, for a lot of people, people don't understand meditation. They think, okay, well, I don't get it. Like I just sit down and close my eyes and don't think of anything. Um, the Yeah, I have tried oak. Uh, the problem, it, there's no problem, is that, yeah, meditation, you do sit down. Usually your eyes are closed. Okay, meditation is different than mindfulness in that way. Um, but you're not just not thinking of anything. It's a lot different than that. What you're actually doing is you're training your brain to be able to recognize thoughts, to see thoughts, but not react to them right away. Just notice them, letting them go by. Oftentimes what happens throughout our day is that we have so much going on in our life and we have so much bouncing around in our mind that we become very reactive to the things that are happening in our life. Um, you know, there's an awesome uh, Viktor Frankl quote that says that, between stimulus and response, there's a space. And in that space is your power to choose. And in that choice lies all of your growth and freedom. Meditation, what you're trying to do with meditation is you're trying to increase that space between a stimulus and a response. You're trying to give yourself a little bit of wiggle room between something that happens and the way that you respond to it, the way that you react, so that you can choose your reaction. All right, again, Balance is about being able to freely act and make decisions that are aligned with your goals and your, your um, values. So being able to make that choice, not just having your body override it and just have the, the, your, your, your uh, instincts just kind of like rage and be like rah, 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 and go crazy. Being able to make that choice allows you to make sure that you're always making decisions that are aligned with your values, which are going to make you feel better about the decisions you're making and create some balance in your life. And meditation is wonderful for that. All right. If you've never meditated before, the way I got into it, I started using uh, Headspace. Headspace has an amazing 10-day program called Take 10. It's 10 minutes of guided meditation every day for 10 days. And then from there, you can sign up for Headspace for additional packs and things like that. If you're not interested in that and you want to try something else, Calm, so calm.com um, is another meditation platform. And it's free for teachers and classrooms to use. So in the show notes, which I'll share later on, um, I linked all that there. Uh, Nathan, you mentioned Oak. So Oak is a new meditation app that came out. Kevin Rose is this, this is my internet man crush, um, but he's this, this internet guy who I've been following for a long time. He's the founder of Dig. He's an angel investor. Uh, he does a lot of cool tech stuff, uh, but he just did this very public kind of creation of this app and just released it, Oak Meditation. I do like Oak. Uh, the reason I like it is because of the fact that it has a very nice timer in it. I'm at a point now I'm in meditation where I don't feel the need to have a guided meditation where I'm able to sit down for 10 to 15 minutes and meditate on my own without it being guided. Just having that, that kind of app to kind of track my mindful minutes, um, which is also tracked with my, my Apple Watch. Uh, just, uh, I don't know, I get a kick out of having things tracked, I guess, but you really don't need it. You can just set a timer or you can just close your eyes and meditate and stop when you're ready to stop. Um, now, the beautiful thing about meditation and mindfulness is that as you get better at it, and it is a skill, and you do get better at it, okay? If ever you've taken up running and you're terrible um, <laughs> at running at first, and but you stuck with it, you notice how quickly you get good at it. Uh, meditation is a lot like that in the sense that you become a lot more comfortable with the process, and it starts spilling into your day-to-day. -day. I can't tell you the amount of times that I'll be teaching, or I'm walking to work, or I'm eating, and all of a sudden I get this urge to just take a step back, and focus all of my attention and all of my energy in that present moment and just be mindful in that moment and it's a wonderful feeling especially like today like teaching i was teaching grade one and we had an awesome lesson we were working on throwing and catching everything but there was this moment where i just felt like you know what like my students are doing everything i've asked them to do they're having fun they're working their butts off for me right now 
this is a really special moment. And to be able to take that pause and just recognize that moment and take a second to be grateful for it is a really, really good feeling. And that comes from just being able to have that space that you create through meditation. So that's meditation. The fifth uh, habit I want to share with you. Um, the next one, the sixth, is reading. Uh, so I talked a little bit about fiction earlier on, and I really do love reading fiction. Um, I think it's important that we read a wide variety of books, of novels, of, of self-help books, of history books, of all kinds of books. Just reading as much as possible. And the reason is, is that through reading, uh, first of all, reading is an amazingly mindful practice or, or activity because of the fact that it's really hard for you to actually get reading done if your brain's off in a billion different places. Um, but reading also allows you to uh, expose yourself to new ideas and new perspectives. Things that you might, ways of thinking you might have never thought of before, which can allow you to translate those into your reality so that you can approach things in different ways and try new things out, all right? And not always be stuck in the same kind of reactions and the same kind of routines and using the same kind of tools. Um, by reading, uh, you, uh, you broaden your horizons, you, uh, you help your mind grow, and you allow yourself to grow as a person. Um, now, the thing is not everybody has time for reading. Like I said before, I don't like reading nonfiction before going to bed. So when do you find that time? Well, first of all, just like exercise, you can make the time. But something that I really enjoy is I really love listening to audiobooks. Uh, I'm really blessed in the sense that I get to walk to work. So uh, my walk to work every day is about 30 minutes uh, to school and then 30 minutes back at the end of the day. Um, so that's a lot of time where I'm just kind of walking. And I use that time to listen to audiobooks, to listen to podcasts, and just allow myself to be exposed to all these ideas so that I can continue to learn and grow as a person. Think of it as like professional development in reading and listening form. Take that time to read because again, there are some books out there that you might read and that might be the right book for you at that specific moment. There might be some ideas in there that you'll connect with that can help you overcome hurdles that you've been facing, that you've been struggling with, that you haven't been able to understand until that moment. I had, I had a big moment like that reading a book called Radical Acceptance by Tara Brock which if you read it, I'm warning you right now, it's very hippy-dippy at a lot of different places. But there were a lot of things that I read in that book that really resonated with me and resonated with my whole life experience at this moment. And that have had a huge impact on the way that I approach obstacles and approach challenges in my life. Um, so definitely, definitely, definitely make sure that you're finding time to read and just try and consume as much written word or spoken word as possible so that you can allow yourself to grow. So that's, that's our sixth habit. And our seventh habit is getting outside, okay? So getting outdoors. Uh, so again, this falls under the kind of like no-brainer category. Um, but I think it's really important that we take that time to get outdoors. And, you know, aside from the fact that it's beautiful, we feel good when we're outdoors, um, and it allows us to Put ourselves in places that that allow us to reflect on the fact that you know we live on this beautiful planet with all this amazing nature around us um, it allows us to get outside and be in a place where we can disconnect from everything else so that we can take that time to reflect and go and really uh think bigger picture in a lot of ways uh, there are a lot of actual like physiological benefits to being outside so i'm going to sound crazy talking about this but if ever you've heard about forest bathing so forest bathing or forest therapy is actually something that became part of a national uh, public health um, uh, program in 1982 in Japan. And basically what it was that Japanese government was kind of promoting people to go outside and spend time amongst trees. Uh, and there are studies coming out of universities in Japan that actually show that there are physiological benefits to being outdoors. People who are outdoors, I believe it was for 20 minutes a week, um, showed while they're outdoors, uh, lower heart rates, lower blood pressure, um, a lower uh, uh, stress hormones, um, and just all kinds of physiological benefits that allow them to relax and get to a place where they're able to think clearly and where they're able to uh, uh, create that sense of balance in their life. So uh, fairly warm. Okay, good. Um, so yeah, so obviously the weather and, uh, and, and things like that, terrain and, and safety all come into play when we're trying to get outdoors. But I think there's a lot of value to us making that time. One thing I'm going to say, and, and I've spoken about this on, on Andy Vasley's podcast, um, 
I read a book this summer called Ego is the Enemy by Ryan Holiday, who's also the author of a book called The Obstacles Away, which is another amazing book. And as I read Ego is the Enemy and I was thinking a lot about my ego, I think oftentimes, uh, you know, when I'm feeling hurt or I feel like I've been feeling uh, treated unfairly, as ridiculous as I feel about it, I feel like my ego like swelling up and swelling up and swelling up to the point where like it almost like consumes like the entire room and just like this like big dark cloud of like moodiness um, because of all these things uh, that are happening. Uh, and my natural response to that is to go for a walk. All right. Whenever I feel myself feeling really overwhelmed and upset and angry and again, like my ego is like swelling up and swelling up. The first thing I want to do is I want to get outside. And I think part of the reason is, is that when you get outside like that, it allows you to feel small again. All right. We live in a huge, vast, gigantic world. Um, and we're just puny, tiny little beings in it. And sometimes it's nice to be reminded of that. Sometimes it's nice to put things into perspective. And I think that getting outdoors and experiencing the, the grandeur of nature uh, can really help us gain that perspective. So that was our seventh habit is getting outdoors. And the last habit, which I think is the most important one, um, but it's also the hardest one, and it's one I struggle with. The last habit is saying no. Making no your default. Now here's the thing. Oftentimes we think of people when people are just no people, they just say no to everything. It's like, well, they're just grumpy or they're lazy or they don't want to help with anything. Um, Steve Jobs famously said that saying no uh, allows you to focus on the things that are really important. All right. When your default is yes and you're yes, 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 and you're allowing all these things to become part of your life and adding all these things to your plate as you go throughout your day, that's where you lose that sense of balance. By making no your default, by saying no off the bat, it gives you that little bit of space to decide, okay, wait, I said no to this thing. Is it aligned or do I really need this in my life? If it's something that you're like, you know what, like I could have, I, I definitely think this is aligned with my goals. It's aligned with my values. You can always go back and see if that opportunity is still available. And if it's past, whatever, it's one last thing on your plate. Okay. But by saying yes to too much in our life, that's how we wind up feeling overwhelmed. That's how we lose our balance. And when we're in that place, that's where we can become resentful towards the feeling of the fact that we're always putting ourselves on the back burner. That's where we can be angry about the fact that we haven't achieved any of our own goals because we're constantly trying to help other people achieve theirs. Um, it's just, it just puts you in this place where it's really easy to become negative and become anxious and become stressed and become depressed because you've said yes to too much. You've tried to spread yourself too thin. All right. We have limited time. We have limited energy. We have limited focus. We need to make sure that we are using those three things and things that really truly matter to us. And yeah, you're going to meet people who are going to get upset at the fact that you said no. Okay. But there's nothing you can do about that. All right. You can't control other people's happiness. You can only focus on your own happiness. And I think it's really important that you remember that. Now, when you do feel guilty about having said no to somebody, though, a good thing that I like to do and that I'm trying to get better at is explaining yourself in terms of I'm saying no to this because I currently have this project that I'm trying to complete and it's important to me to complete that or saying no to something that I'm saying no to this because it's not quite aligned with my values or my goals at the moment or saying no to this because I'm already spreading myself too thin here and I'm trying to make sure that I'm maintaining balance in your life, even in my life, even though you all, you might think, oh, people might not react really well to that. You would be surprised at how much respect you will get from people from having said no in the first place, all right? For having explained to somebody, it's like, hey, I'm sorry, but I'm really making sure that I'm focusing on my priorities right now. Um, and people will respect you for that. Not everybody, you always get those people that will complain, but again, there's nothing you can do about that. Try to make no your default, try to say no to things. And even though you might be worried that you might be missing out or that you might be letting people down, by saying no to, uh, to, to some things, you're, allowed, you're basically saying yes to the things that are really important to you. And when you say yes to the things that are really important to you, you're able to achieve your goals. You're able to act in ways that are aligned with your values. You're able to feel good about the life that you're leading. So say no. So those were the eight uh, habits that I want to share with you. I'll just throw them back up here on the screen so you can see them uh, one last time. Um, just before we move on to the next part here, uh, I just want to uh, remind you again that I, everything I've talked about, it's all in the show notes. 
Um, and if I've gone through all of these habits in great detail with links to everything that I mentioned. So part three of the show here is observe. So talking about um, seeing all of this in action. And I kind of wanted to use this part to talk about my experience um, with creating balance in my life and where that kind of came from. So here's the thing. I'm, uh, I come from a very passionate family. Okay, people who have met me, you probably know that I can be a little hot-headed at times. Uh, uh, and I use that passion to get so much done and create all this stuff. Um, but it also consumes me at times. Um, and back in the day, I, I used to be fine with it. I would go on these crazy, crazy, crazy highs where I would say yes, 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 yes to everything and get a lot of stuff done, but then all of a sudden get overwhelmed and just kind of crash and burn and just go on these crazy lows. Uh, and when I was single and unmarried, I was fine with that life. I was like, you know what? That's just it. That's how I live my life. It's a roller coaster. It goes up and down, up and down, up and down. I just go through it that way. I never really saw the importance of living any kind of balanced life. Things have changed. I'm married now. Uh, I'm expecting, uh, Jess and I are expecting our first child in March. Um, and what I started to realize is that, you know, when I was getting these really bad lows, uh, these, these mood swings, um, and these states of straight up depression, uh, you know, it wasn't just affecting me anymore. It was affecting my wife. It was affecting, uh, my family. It was affecting my teaching. It was affecting my friendships. It was affecting everything. And I started to really clue in on just what kind of impact that can have and the impact it continues to have. Okay. I'm not pretending that, uh, things are, are perfect right now. Um, and that's when I started to make the decision that, okay, I need to make some change in my life uh, or some changes in my life. Uh, but I, what I will say is that, you know, I just shared eight habits with you and these are habits that you've probably read in other places in the internet and other people have talked about and things like that. I didn't just adopt all these habits at once. All right. And I didn't, Although I tried a lot of different things, um, I stuck with the things that were really working with me and having an impact with me. And, you know, when I first started, I remember I was using an app called Lyft, which is now called Coach.me. And I was trying to, I was trying to be perfect at it. So every day, I was like, I want to get these streaks going. I want to get all these habits done every day. Boom, 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 boom. Making my bread, drinking water, meditating, journaling. Boom, boom, boom. Trying to be perfect. And when I wasn't being perfect, I'd get really mad at myself and be like, oh, I can't believe I didn't do this today. And I'd get upset. That doesn't work. <laughs> all right. Uh, you're going to stumble. You're going to fall. You're going to trip up. You're going to make mistakes. There's no getting around it. The important thing is that you never look at those things as failures that um, you never look at yourself as a failure. It's okay to fail. Uh, just because you fail at times doesn't make you a failure. All right. Treat yourself with compassion. Treat yourself with love. Um, know that sometimes you're going to fall off the horse and then you're going to be able to pick yourself right back up and get right back up on the horse. Um, know that, you know, you, you can give as much as you want, but it's okay for you to take time to get, you can try and fill others as much as you want, but it's okay for you to take time to fill yourself. Um, just make sure you're taking care of yourself. You know, when you're on a plane and they're, they're going through the safety and everything, they always talk about the oxygen mask and always put on your oxygen mask first before you can help somebody else. I feel like as teachers, we'd all have that natural reaction of trying to help others right away. Uh, but it's okay to put your oxygen mask on first uh, so that you're taking care of yourself so that you're in a place where you can continue to serve others. Um, and one thing I, I did want to mention here is that you know, I, I titled this show uh, Fighting the Funk. And the reason is that uh, I still get in these funks sometimes where, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll do a lot of work and I'll, I'll, I'll throw my heart into my teaching and I'll, I'll, I'll try to be everywhere at once. And then I'll kind of crash and burn and I'll feel in this place where it's a funk. I feel unmotivated. I feel uh, bad about myself. I, I, my confidence is down. I get into this funk and then it's, I can stay in that for like, a week or a couple weeks or even a month sometimes uh, depending on how bad I let things get um, and I titled this fighting the funk but you know it's not about fighting any funk it's about being proactive okay and it's about setting yourself up for success uh, in the first place now when you do get in a funk it happens everybody gets into those moods sometimes um, 
but sometimes those funds can be a little bit more. And I've been in places where, uh, you know, where things have been, been a lot tougher um, than I thought and that I didn't even realize how bad things kind of got. Um, and two things I, I want to say. First of all, if you need professional help, and I'm somebody who has gone out and sought professional help, okay? So I've, I've gone to talk about issues I've been going on in my life uh, with psychologists. Um, and I feel like there's still this big taboo about it. Uh, and there shouldn't be. Because it's you recognizing the fact that you need help in an area and you being proactive about that and seeking that help. If you need professional help, do not hesitate to get professional help. You would be amazed at the power and uh, that it can have on you. And also, uh, it's, it's, it's a lot easier than you think it will be. Uh, I know that when I was going in uh, for the first time, I was so dead set against it. Um, but I knew I had to do something. I knew I needed to, uh, to uh, take my, um, I don't know, my healing, I guess, to the next level. And being able to see... Uh, to, to seek somebody out for that, it, it really had a, a big impact on me. And I was so like, I feel like I was miserable that first session. Uh, and the person was really, really kind and they were great. And I went back and I started feeling a lot better and we came up with all kinds of strategies and everything that really helped. Go get that help, all right? It's worth it. Don't be afraid of it. Go out and get it. The second thing I'm gonna say, I didn't put it in a habit because I didn't want to feel like, oh, this is a tactic that you should use. Um, relationships matter. Okay? And the people in your life uh, matter. Make sure you're surrounding yourself with kind, good, um, fun, and, and caring people. And when you have those kinds of people in your life, be grateful for them and take care of those relationships. Anytime that I've been in really dark places or really down, it's been people in my life like that who have helped me get out of it. And I'm not saying that you should just maintain those relationships so that people can help you when you need it. Um, but what I'm saying is that people matter and people and relationships are what are truly important. So make sure you take care of your loved ones and the people uh, in your life. So, so that's, I wanted to share a little bit about that. I'm just going to wrap this up here. Okay. We're almost on the hour. Um, just with the act. So the final, the final kind of portion of this uh, presentation. So let me just show you here my little strategy. I'd like you to think about and see if it's something that could work for you. So, when you're trying to create a sense of balance in your life, start off, start small. Pick one habit that you think can have a big impact on your life. Take the time to reflect on that habit, okay? Don't just say, oh, okay, I'm gonna try this. Really look at the habits I listed here, look at other ones you can find online, um, and just think about, okay, what, where am I really struggling in my life, and which habit here can help me uh, develop or create a better sense of balance in my life. Once you select your habit, set yourself a goal, okay? Use that SMART principle. Uh, make sure you're setting something that's realistic, okay? So don't say like, oh, I'm going to be exercising like seven days a week, even though I don't ever exercise or anything like that. Something that's realistic, something that's measurable, something that you're actually going to be able to attain, something that's really specific, okay? Set yourself a schedule and really set yourself a timeline. So tell yourself, okay, well, I'm going to try and, um, you know, I'm going to try and journal at least this many times per week for this many weeks, all right? So set yourself your schedule and then see how it goes through and track your progress. There's a ton of great apps that you can use to do this but you can also just use a calendar, okay? But I like using streaks on my phone. I've also used coach.me in the past. There's some really cool app, there's a really cool app called Today, which is really great too. Um, but make sure you're, you're tracking your progress to see how you actually did, to see if you were really fully committed to developing that habit. And finally, and most importantly, reflect on the process, okay? So once you've, you've, you've come to the end of the schedule that you set and you've tracked all your progress, Ask yourself, is my life better than it was when I, before I started uh, implementing this habit in my life or tried to develop this habit, okay? See, sometimes you might be like, hey, you know what? This has really turned things around or this has really helped me or, or I really see an impact on my mood and my mindset. Other times you might be like, you know what? Nope, I really didn't really like this, okay? Like meditation is a good example. Meditation really isn't for anyone, for everyone. Uh, I know like, like, for example, like my sister-in-law, She's my and slash teaching partner. She's a beast. She loves working out every day. That's her form of mindfulness. That's where she gets that. And that's fine. You know, that's that's everybody has things that works best for them. So reflect on the process, see if it works, and then repeat from there and see if there's something else you can add. Or if if there, you don't want to be adding anything to your plate, don't add anything else to your plate. If you're feeling good, feel good, okay, and enjoy it. 
But just five little steps, select your habit, set yourself a goal, set yourself a schedule, track your progress, and reflect on that process. Um, if you would like to learn more about anything I talked about today, uh, I just want you to know that, hold up, I got it right here. There we go. So go bit.ly slash P-E-S-L-001. So it's Phys Ed Show Live 001, okay, all lowercase. Uh, that'll take you right to the show notes for this. I am going to be taking this uh, video that I've recorded here and I'm going to be uploading that to YouTube. So I'll be embedding that too. So if there's anything that you saw in the video that you want to, to re refer back to, that video will be made live. But if you look at the show notes, I kind of went uh, crazy with the show notes. I put in a ton of information. Um, but I'll also be responding to any comments on this post as well as comments on the blog post to help you out. So I hope you enjoyed this first live episode of the Phys Ed Show. If you'd like to learn more about the Phys Ed Show, uh, I don't think I have that here. Um, you can always check out uh, the show page at, there we go, phyzed.show. <laughs> Pretty simple, it's easy to remember. Um, you know, I have the podcast, I have the blog, I have uh, I have this these live episodes. Uh, all this again is just to try and find content that can help inspire you and help you grow as an educator and as a person. So thank you so much to everybody for tuning in here. Okay, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it was a blast. I'm really looking forward to going back and reading all your comments. Sorry, I couldn't answer everything here as I was going uh, about this. Um, but I really appreciate you taking the time to, uh, to be here. And I really hope that uh, you can create some balance in your life uh, so you can just feel great, be your best self in every way possible. Thanks so much for watching and happy teaching.